What's up guys? So today I'm just going to sort of talk about the uh, survey results and just sort of go over some of my opinions about the server and sort of my developmental philosophies, if you will. So there's a few things that I really want to hit on and really get your opinions on. The first one would be Iron Man mode. So so this is kind of, it, it doesn't necessarily entirely affect Iron Man mode, but that's where it stems from. So on Old School, there's a boss, Cerberus. You guys know the boss, Cerberus. It's on Revival 2. I don't know why I tried to specify that it was on Old School. Anyways, I hate that boss. I, I really do. You have to pray flick, and I die all the time when I do it. It's in an annoying location to get to, and it's obviously super important because you need the boots, right? You can't not have the boots. And that's kind of where I'm at on my Iron Man on old school. And I've just... I'm not a fan of the boss. I don't like the mechanics. I don't like pray flicking, and I haven't been enjoying it. But the way old school is really set up is you have to have one thing to get to another thing. You gotta have this... So that you can kill this to get that from this. That's really the entirety of how old school is designed. And as an Iron Man, that's the way it is. So I understand how a lot of people would like that. That would be fun. You know, there's a there's almost a clear path of what you need to do to get to where. Now, sure, you could go kill a boss with a suboptimal weapon. But, you know, if you play old school, you know that that's just not smart and not worth doing in most situations. So... When it comes to game development on the server, I, I don't like that. I didn't like stuff like that. I don't like there only being one way to do one thing, um, and you're forced to do that one thing to get it. Now, um, so through that logic, I've made, like, for example, the Sabres boots. There's plenty of different ways to get them. I'm sure they're from a lot of the different chests. I'm sure you can buy them from the donator store right now. There's a ton of different ways you can get them. Um, and so I understand how that, that could devalue them. Obviously, they're not as impressive as just killing Cerberus. Um, you'll know that anybody who has them, you wouldn't even really think about where they got them from because they could get them from so many different ways. And that's really what I want to talk about is that's kind of the structure of how I've designed the server. That's what I like personally, and I code things I like personally. You know, that's just kind of that's just kind of how, you know, that makes the sense to do, right? You, I wouldn't want to code things I would never like, you know. Um, but we are at a point now where almost everything is that way. You can get anything from anything, you know. For example, you look at my legs, you, you know you probably would have no clue where I got them from, whether it was an Uber box, a raid box, um, or from the actual boss Tecton. You know, there's, there's there's multiple different ways to get that. You know, my chest plate, you know, did I get that from God Wars 2 boss, or did I actually get that from an Uber box? Um, and, and even like the smaller tier items, there's so many more different ways to get them. Now, there are plenty of things that exist only in one way or another, such as the Apex Shield. The only way to get the shields for it are from Ash's Dungeon. But, you know, given my, my trend, so given my trend of like making multiple ways of doing things, I'm sure down the road we would probably get to a point where there was something else that gave those, those items. You know, there's only so many items that exist and there's only so many ways to balance an item. So I guess my real question is, should we, should we keep doing that? Would you, do you, do you not care? I guess there's, there's really, I'm not going to make a new survey, but there's really three, uh, I suppose, three options I'm looking for. Um, so there's one, do you want to see more of things like that? You just want to, do you, do you agree with me where you'd like to see everything in some, you know, something or other down the road, you know, multiple ways to get this item or that item, you know, not really, um, you know, not really considering it when new items are created. Now, obviously we, we want to balance things. We don't want new items to just be completely overdone like the boss invasion stuff for example is not in the donator store it's not in any boxes it's only available for boss invasion um so sticking with like kind of we kind of have like a middle ground pace right now and yeah there's a lot of stuff where you can get it multiple ways but there are some things you can't and do you think we should stick with that just stick with the current pace of what we're doing um would you like to see a lot less of these things uh would you like to see like you know if the boss comes out with a drop to know that that drop will never be added anywhere else you would only ever get it from that boss um, there's some people that that really matters to them. They, they for some reason, it, it makes all the difference in the world that the person got it from a, a monster drop rather than from a, a box. But that makes no sense to me because if you trade, then what's the difference between you buying the item and getting it as a drop, right? Does it really make a difference? Maybe, sure, you'll feel better about it personally, but to the, to the other players and to the entire game, does it really make a difference? You know, there's just let me know your opinions on that and that kind of stuff because... You know, obviously my opinions are, I don't care. It makes no difference whether you bought the item, whether you got it from a mystery box, whether you got it from a giveaway, whether you got it from however you got it. It really makes no difference. Um, as long as it was not, you know, 
as long as it wasn't like brokenly, you know, overpowered by you. Just I don't know some some box that just gave it a lot. You know, that's that, that's the kind of things that I would really be worried about. But as far as you know, him getting that scythe right there, I, I know for him that that's cool. You know, that's awesome. That's it's cool to get the scythe. But to everyone else in the rest of the game, does it make a difference if he got that monster drop or if he opened up an Uber box? It's either way that the exact item is in the game. Um, and that's just kind of my philosophy with coding. You know, I, I didn't really care about stuff like that. But if, there, if there's a lot of people that do, let me know your opinions on that. So the next one I want to talk about is the donator store. So I'll go over this, this the first survey question we had. And i got to be really careful because you do see IPs on this website. And I want to make sure I don't show that. Uh, so this was the first question, which of these scenarios best defines pay to win? Um, so you can see the the resulting one was gear that can only be let me probably be better if I search yeah gear that can only be obtained through donating. So that is the one that actually did win the result. But you can see kind of where the splits were. Uh, some people don't care. Some people have to you know it's it's really a, it's one of those things where it's not really as straightforward as just having one one of these answers or not. A lot of the times it's multiple of them, um, which is why I wanted to you know get an opinion like this so I could really see kind of how people prioritize it. So the main two are the ones in the middle, being able to directly purchase any item you want and gear that is only obtained through donating. So when you come to Revival, I'll go home and show you the shop. You can directly purchase some items. Um, uh, the, sh the Donator Store currently has bundles. I'll get into that one in a sec. But this is what you could currently purchase from the in-game Donator Store. And yeah, there's quite a few. I mean, if you were a brand new player, you had, I don't know, a $100 bond, you could get your, you know, a setup for whatever style you really wanted. Um, so when I when I actually asked this question, what I thought personally would be the most overpowered, or, or what, what I would consider pay to win, was actually the first answer. The game being too hard to where it was easier to just donate for stuff. Now maybe my sentence, I don't know, maybe sound made it sound you know less less serious than it would be. But I felt like well, there was a lot of games, uh, a lot of other servers that were like that, where the entire design of the game was really difficult. But then, like, you could just donate for whatever you wanted, and it was all really cheap. So you, it was kind of like just incentivizing people to donate for the stuff because it was reasonably priced, and it was and that was and it was impossible to get in the game, you know. Um, like, I mean, like, Ikov isn't like that. I don't, I don't really know Ikov too much, but I just remember with Bandos, it was like impossible to get it as a drop. But if you were willing to donate um, two bucks, you could get it. You know, that's that was always what I was whenever I concerned about was concerned about pay to win. That was the only thing that ever really bothered me was servers that were like that, where you just couldn't you couldn't actually play the game because it was too difficult to earn anything or obtain anything, um, and anybody could just donate immediately with like three bucks and beat you, you know, beat all of your multiple hours worth of not getting anything. That's a big reason why revival is as easy as it probably is. I think most people would agree that it's easier than it is hard. At least I would say maybe seventy thirty, but everybody would have their own opinions on that. Um, but, I mean, that's, you know, I, I wanted people to get rewards. I mean, you just saw them get a scythe, you know. We scroll up. People, I'm, I'm going to clean up the mystery box loots because I feel like they're too spammy. So, you're probably just going to see mostly mystery box. But, I mean, dra there's a dragon hunter crossbow mic you just got. I mean, people get drops. You get loots. You're actually rewarded with your time. Um, if you're kind of looking, you probably might have seen some spoiler items. I apologize for any spoilers. Who cares, right? If you play the game, you'll have seen what I just got. Anyways, there we go. Dragon sword. That's a, that's a hardcore Iron Man, I believe. I believe he's a hardcore Iron Man. He might be a duo. He might be a duo, because there's a... I, I, I don't know. Either way, I know he's an Iron Man, and he just got a really nice drop. So that's cool, you know. Um, that's, you know, that's that's the way we design the game. If you put in the effort, if you spend the time doing it, you'll you'll be rewarded. You know, nothing's too crazy, nothing's too difficult. Um, but yeah, so that was interesting to me, because that was, that was what I always considered it, but it was not even, like, you know, not even a top answer or anything like that. Um, so as far as offering direct items i think that's something we could easily remove i don't think anyone i don't even think anyone buys any of those things it's not like efficient um i'm sure maybe newer players that don't know the server very well and they're buying them but that's the only thing i can really think of because i don't know maybe maybe actual in-game players that are earning bonds are iron men or hardcore iron men that don't want to do that hardcore content i can understand how that would be dumb but yeah, I don't think there'd be any issue with removing that stuff. I don't think anyone, too many people are purchasing it. Um, but the question is, what do we replace with it? Uh, you know, so the other option that was, it was, you know, that was highly, well, the one that was the, high, the most devoted was gear that can only be obtained through donating. And I completely agree with this one, too. I think um, every single donator, as someone was talking about donator perks for direct donations. 
And I understand that, you know, obviously we want donations and you, you want to be more rewarded for actually donating to the server. But at the same time, if we offer any, like, donator-only specific perks, then that's kind of that's kind of pay to win, right? I mean, if there's nothing that a normal player could do to earn that, then it's kind of broken. So, yeah, I would like to encourage direct donations and stuff like that, but without, you know, breaking our pay to win wall. And that's something we don't want to do. We don't want to be pay to win. That's the whole point of this question was to, you know, make sure that we're on the right track and we're not... Um, going down that road, you know, we're, we're being upfront and honest about all of our, our options. So I think what we would do if we were not selling direct items, what we need to look at is perks like the guy I was talking about. But um, instead of being related to the web store and direct donating, um, have the perks in the in-game donator store. Because the in-game donator store, everyone can access. You can get points from the crests, with, I think I saw somebody used... Um, you get bonds all the time. You can directly buy a bond with Slayer points if you really wanted to go through that effort. So it's, you know, it's relatively easy to get in-game donator points. I have 10, <laughs> and I don't know how, but <laughs> I do have 10. Um, so, I mean, you can you can easily get that. And so I think that would be the best way to do it. So just, like, you'd be able to, you know, keep doing what you would do or you donate for either the bundles we have. Um, I'll talk about that in a sec. I know I said I would talk about it, but I'll talk about it in a sec. Um, the bundles or, you know, just straight up buy bonds. And then in the in-game donor store, rather than selling direct items, um, we would probably keep the random chance boxes and stuff like that. But then offer newer perky type items. And I don't have a whole lot, but I'll just give you an example of what one would be. And I can't, I don't, I can't promise this. Um, I wouldn't even know how to code it, so it, you know, it would require effort. But, like, for example, a ticket that gave you double experience for a day or something like that. Or um, I was just—I've been thinking about these items that exist on RuneScape Three. They're—I think they're called Lucky Charms or Elite Charms or something like that. And basically, whenever you killed a monster or got a drop, you, um, you you basically just got an extra item if you had that charm in your inventory, and then the charm gets consumed. So let's just say you have ten—you know, let's just pretend this is the the charms. And then how I would have it work is whenever you got a rare drop and a rare drop that announced over yell. Um, it would consume one of your charms, and then you'd access like a special table and just get an extra bonus item, and then that would be something you can earn in game. And then, and then to make sure it was even more obtainable, we would probably add it as an in game item somewhere else down the road, whether it be a mini game, a boss, or whatever. You know, just because again, we want to make sure it's accessible um, for you know the in game players that are playing the server. So that's kind of an, an idea we have. We could do other things. Um, so I was a little surprised to see how the, the, the loot crates and, you know, when I think of pay to win, I think of a lot of that kind of stuff. There's a lot of like games, like for example, Apex, where you have to, um, like when they sell items or like they sell skins, they sell them for like $11 and s instead of 10. That way you have to spend like $30 instead of 20. You know what I mean? Like, so you have to buy credits and the credits are in really weird, in inconsistent amounts. And so in order to buy two skins, you'd have to spend, like, $30 and just, you know, scummy stuff like that. Uh, that's, you know, that's always another thing I associate with pay-to-win, and it doesn't seem like that's too much of people's concern. I guess if it's just, like, a promotion type thing, there's really no concern. And that is where bundles lump in. We do a lot of bundles just to try to, you know, entice people, just lump things together to sort of add extra value. And, and they're always different. We always we always try to just make them completely different than the last one. Some of them will repeat because there's obviously some better items than others. But um, So it's interesting to see where people are on that. I think that's a good way to probably, you know, reliably do it. Do it all. Do the server, you know, with without directly selling those specific items. That's that's really the goal is to not never do anything like that and to even slow down on our current existing boxes. Um so then we have tons of overpowered boxes. Now, this one is was probably a little inconsistent with the, the wording because you would probably consider our boxes to be overpowered. Um, it's really just what you would, you would how you would define overpowered. Um, so what I don't like is games like like if you've ever played Madden Ultimate Team or uh, the FUT, the, the FIFA Ultimate Team, they're basically the same thing. You get packs, right? And the packs would be $10, $20, they even have $100 options, whatever. You get a pack, and then you open it up, and you get not a single card, right, or not a single player. And the pl the chances of getting anyone good are just like 1 in 1,000, 1 in 500, 1 in 700, 1 in blah, blah, blah. You know, just, just crazy odds that no one ever gets. So you have the upside of those items being rare, but at the same time, then you're just getting crapped on. Like, none, you're just not getting your values worth. 
So with a lot of our boxes, like the raid box, you're not there's nothing bad on it. Now, sure, you could probably consider uh, the obsidian helmet bad, right? Yeah, I'm not I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying like that's the worst you could get would be something like that, a dragon harpoon or obsidian helmet. No matter what, you're going to get a raid item. And with Uber boxes, no matter what, you're going to get an Uber tier item. Now, again, there's some obviously better than others, right? But the point is you're not going to get, you know, a, a super prayer pot. You're not going to get a mystery box. You're not going to get a whip. You're not going to get anything useless. You're always going to get something of that tier. Um, so are those the mystery boxes that you would consider overpowered? Or is that Should we slow down on those? Because... Sure, they they are adding more items to the game than the other ones, the ones where you get dragon arrows and ancient staffs, and, and, and then maybe you'll get a, a Zerosian scythe or something you know, crazy, but most of the time you won't. Like the normal mystery boxes, that those kind of you know those kind of boxes. Personally, I, I'm against those. I, I think as a consumer, those are just complete trash, and um, and and I I, I I just I don't agree with. It. I think you should. I think if you're gonna donate for an item, you should get something. You know. Uh, you know, if, if you don't get the big item, you should at the very least get something close to worthwhile, you know. I, I would, it would be so annoying to buy a, a, a $30 Uber box or whatever the, the normal price is. I don't even know because we usually always have deals going on, but whatever the normal price is, and then you get the Gorilla Pet or something like that. That I mean, most people that have that happen to them are mad, and I, I understand why. So that's why we don't do those boxes, but at the same time, they are adding more items into the game. And maybe that's having a worse effect than before, you know. So let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, we'll go over the rest of the survey results, and then I think I'll call this a video. We're getting a little long. We'll just trap uh, the survey as pay to win. Uh, 10% no, or 10% yes, and 40% no. That's about what I would expect. I don't know if the 10% is, like, truly believe that. If you do, you know, I appreciate any opinions. I know exactly what you think would be over the edge or what, what the worst, um, you know, the worst thing you think is. How do you feel about the current state of loot boxes? I mean, that's really... I think that I think it's one of those things where there's never really going to be a precise answer. You have some people wanting more, some people think it's the same. A uh, chunk of people that think that we should do less. I think it's just I think I think no matter when or how we pull it, it'll always end up something like this. And I would think that that's probably a good thing. I think that I would think that that's as balanced as it could possibly get. I mean, I think um, I think some areas we need to be better, and I think some areas we could you know add more. I think we'll just I think I think you know we'll just we'll just have to keep improving at it. And if we ever step over the lines or do something that's considered too overpowered or whatever, at any point, let us know. Um, I, I did say that when the boss invasion stuff came out, that I would never add it to any boxes for at least a year. <laughs> and I've, you know, obviously there hasn't been in any boxes or anything like that. Um, so I think stuff like that. I think anything that's new that comes out should have a grace period. I, I would say. Um, but yeah, which would you prefer, uh, expanding on older stuff or just creating new stuff? Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it's pretty close, 56, or 40, 60. Uh, I think most people would rather just see new stuff. I think a lot of servers have, um, their goal is to just be as close to the live game as, as they can. And, um, the fact that they're doing that, and that's their goal, and obviously isn't our goal, which means they're going to accomplish that better than we would, right? So, if we all of a sudden just tried to be exactly like old school, we're going to fail at it, because there's so many other servers that have had that as a goal from day one, and they're better. They're just truly better at that. So we need to stick with what we're better at. And I think one thing we're better at is creating unique content. You know, I don't I don't pay attention to too many servers. I think more servers are starting to like do their own stuff now, and that's good to see. But that's what we do, and I think that that's what we should stick to. And it seems like that's kind of roughly the, what people are agreeing with. I think that some older stuff should be improved or expanded on. But I think for the most part, we it's always better to just keep moving forward. Uh, would you agree with the statement that content is inevitable? 35, uh, 72% to 27%. It's, yeah, I would agree too. Um, I think that there's always just going to be something that's going to push something else. You know, for, As long as we're updating the server, the older updates, the less useful updates are always going to get pushed back. And if we, you know, if we update those and fix those and improve those, then something else is just going to get pushed back. It's, it's, it's inevitable, and I think most people agree with that. I do think that there's... I don't think it has to be an idol. I think there, there's always something you could do to try to improve something that was considered dead content, and I don't think you should just outright give up. But, but yeah, I think I, I think that it's it's more often than not. When it comes to quests, what are your thoughts? I'm not gonna skip that. I'm not gonna go over this one just because it's opinions. And there might be random crap in there. Um, but it seems like everybody's just giving their opinions. I, I, I'll, you know, I've, I've read their opinions and I'm, I'm definitely going to take them into consideration. I know one person said, no, I'm going to quit. 
<laughs> I hope you don't quit. I hope. I mean, I'm gonna make sure that they're not like forcible. Like the only way you would ever be forced to do them is if we added some trimmed completionist requirement way down the road. And if that point, if you're, I mean, if that's, if this is what's holding you back, then you know, credit to you because I assume we'll have even crazier, um, you know, crazier challenges. Which style would you say is best in general? You have melee as number one, range as the third, or melee as two, range as the third, and magic as number one. This was mainly because magic had a glitch with it where magic attacks were doubled. That's been fixed, um, so now magic would probably be probably third, I would think. Um, so I am gonna. I'm, people are complaining that the magic accuracy nerf was too much, and I agree. We're gonna we're gonna make some tweaks to that. So in the next update, you can expect that. But the damage thing was fixed, so we'll, we'll, we'll buff. We'll probably bring the, bring the magic accuracy back to where it was where it was originally, and then we'll just go from there. Because I think the main problem was really just that glitch. That it, it was um, it was when I attempted to add the synchronicity staffs bonus or whatever. Apparently, I just had the bonus applying to all the spells in general. So that doesn't necessarily work out. Um, as far as that staff goes, I know a lot of people are saying, why don't you make it exactly like it is in old school? But the problem with that is that would basically be the Ichthyrin Scepter. The Ichthyrin Scepter is like, that's what it does. So the Sanguinesti staff, if it did that, would kind of devalue it. Ours came out first, so you can see where there's the annoying confusion. Um, so I don't know. I agree that it should be better. Definitely. Why am I in range? I don't know. Um, I, sh I agree it should definitely be better, but... I don't think making it the same as the Clarin Scepter is the way to go. I think it should have a different, unique ability, not the one that it has. Um, comments on the system, most people, you know, they, they don't PvP, so they don't really have an opinion. Uh, I really thought it would be way more solo, I'll be honest. I was surprised to see there's that many people that were interested in both. Maybe we've just, we've grown as a server, I don't know. But that's good to see. It's good to see that we should focus more on, uh, so, you know, some group activities. And then leave your name to be entered in the giveaway. I am going to randomly pick the winner now, and then we'll go over who is the winner. So at the point I'm doing this, there were 45 responses, so basically 1 in 45. There were four skips, but yeah, 45 people who left something. Uh, if it's not a username or whatever, then we'll just go to the person directly below it. All right, so the winner is Raven. Raven, you are the winner. Congrats, you win a $100 bond. So I will have that either contact me or at some point I'll put it on your account, but uh, congrats, Raven, you are the winner. But yeah, I apologize for how long this video went on. I just wanted to get some sort of final opinions on everything uh, before we start moving forward. I do think that one of the next few updates is going to be a rebalancing change. And we're going to look at a lot of the boxes. So I really want to get you guys' opinions. Make sure we don't go too crazy with it. Make sure we don't, you know, go, you know, not enough or whatever. Um, just let us, just let us know your thoughts. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.